You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Wake up. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Relax the Podcast. I'm Colleen Ballinger. And I am Eric Stuklin. Eric Stuklin at your service. And uh, the original pronunciation. We're married. And this is our podcast. Okay. And we're going to just kind of chat and have a little date night tonight for you guys because we had a day. We had quite the day. Should we should we start off by saying who needs to relax this week, love? I'm fine with that. Okay, who we do you seem think to be needs doing to relax? That every episode, so why stop now? Who needs to relax? Uh, for me, mm-hmm. this might be a longer topic, okay. but I really want to get into it. Self-checkout needs yeah. to relax. Yeah. And this is coming from someone who I will say I, I will always choose self-checkout. Oh, for sure, same. Like, uh, given the option uh, to not have to interact with other humans, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. just check out myself. Like, I'll just do it myself always. Me but, too. like, I have some uh, some issues with it, mm-hmm. uh, which is what has happened to businesses. Okay, so you ever go into a supermarket mm-hmm. and they have self-checkout mm-hmm. and there is a line now for self-checkout. Yeah. And then there are numbered from mm-hmm. one to 10, 10 registers vacant, except for one, one actual employee ringing up customers, one person that is paid there to be there mm-hmm. hourly to ring out people. The other nine registers, no one, mm-hmm. empty. There's just boxes on it. It's mm-hmm. like been vacant for years, it seems. Yes. But for self-checkout, a line. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, and then in self-checkout, there's an employee that's there that you always kind of need help from, whether it be a- Do you? What are you talking about? Uh, something won't scan or you need to have- I didn't know you uh, had so much prob- A security so tag in- taken off of or okay. they're the one, they're like handing out bags to people who then need bags. So there okay. is an employee yeah. there. Yet here we are in 2021, ringing up our own groceries or things at Target, mm-hmm. let's say. And uh, what do we get for it? You get to bring up your own stuff. I love it. I am like so against you wanting them to relax. I love no, self-checkout. I'm, ju- I'm just saying that they, all it, these other- You save regist- so much time. Have you ever- like- Sometimes you don't want to do it You have, or you have like a bunch of, like grocery store, you have a bunch of stuff, like mm-hmm. a big shop and there's a giant line because they only have one person actually working register. Mm-hmm. You're not going to do that in self-checkout if you have yeah. a shopping cart full of stuff and there's a bigger line for yeah. the self-checkout. So what, so here's what I'm proposing. Okay. If you do self-checkout, mm-hmm. you should also get the employee discount. I'm not asking them to what? pay us. You're I'm not insane. asking for a living wage from these places. I'm not asking for an hourly wage. I'm just asking for if you do self-checkout, some sort of incentive. And, and I would say it would be an employee discount because technically, I mean, what, what do they call that? Was that a 1040? What, what is the thing you fill out when you're an independent contractor? I, I don't know what you're talking about. You oh you don't okay well I'm just saying employee discount for when you do self checkout or some mm-hmm. sort of like you know you're talking about like tax forms like you're a gig worker at that point when you're when you're checking yourself like a W nine is that what a you're w-9, saying W nine yeah oh. what did I say <laughs> I think you said W D forty which is a like oil that you yeah, spray on it's things it's lubricant for machines um, uh, but yeah so, so something like that okay and non it should not be taxed okay I think you're insane but I love you. What do you mean? I love self I think this checkout. Great, I don't know I what you're it, talking about. I love it too. You know what you're, you're getting saying, paid? You're getting paid like because well, I, I guess different I for everyone. For me, so, I, I, I'm arguing I am, for it. I'm just saying you also want to be we're, paid to do something you like a discount, and because I'm working, I'm essentially working there. You're not working there, love. The people I, who are uh, there for eight hours doing it are working there. You're there for ten minutes. You should not get the employee discount. I know, but I'm like typing in. <laughs> <laughs> fixed rate broccoli prices versus our, you know what I mean? I'm typing in things into a machine. I have no training on this machine, mm-hmm. but I'm typing in things to this machine and I'm scanning things it. and I'm bagging them. And they're all while an empl- an actual employee of this establishment, just watching me. He's just standing there watching me ring you, out myself. He's being though, paid. He gets an employee. But discount. you just said that you use this person every time you said you use whoever's sitting there no, I'm every just saying, time I don't use them i'm saying they and in- inevitably end up being involved because exactly s- something earning their skin. employee discount i'm just saying a lot of times they're just there to say like thanks for coming i love you i think that like in order to for it 
to get, in order for us to get an employee discount, it would have to be beneficial for the company for us to use those self self checkouts. And I don't think that it is. I don't know. It's why they have to. They're they're paying less employees, obviously, because the other nine registers that they have there are just vacant. Because I feel like it causes more problems than not. Like they all, like you said, they always have to come up to the machine and like put in their numbers, and it slows things down. I feel like it must. No, essentially, it means that they only need like two people to work there at a time. Oh my gosh, I don't. I I, I also think that. Well, let's let's dive deep. Like, well, what more can we do for them to to pay us? I, I think there's nothing. I think this will never happen. I think this is the way of the future. We're, we're doing most- self-checkout. Why not open up the stock room? Why don't we, uh, as we buy something, we'll go restock it. You know what I mean? We'll go back to the stock room. We'll bring it out. We'll replace the item that we're buying. And then we'll check ourselves out. So now we're also this is not a liability restocking issue. shelves like, these are- and checking ourselves out. Oh my God, this is not going to work out. And you would never do that, by the way. <laughs> I totally would. No, you wouldn't. And they wouldn't need any employees. No I will way. also, I will do their scheduling. I'll do their employee scheduling. Why do you need like 10 cents off I'm so just, bad? No, I'm just saying. Aren't you like a loyalty member at these grocery stores? I'm just saying that I'm pretty good at this and I deserve uh, compensation. All right. We'll talk to the man. Do you have something you need that needs to- uh, I'm still thinking. Still I have thinking. so many things I need to relax and they're all pregnancy related. And I'm trying not to do mm. that. So we anyway. promised each other we wouldn't talk about- Poop or, well, that's preg- gonna happen. or pregnancy that's happening. in this episode. Uh, uh, we did not make this. You just said this just now. This was not a promise. <laughs> it's, but uh, It's going to happen. Uh, I'll say while you're thinking, mm-hmm. how about this? I'll talk about how last week I said that pinky toenails mm-hmm. need to relax mm-hmm. because they're weird and pointless. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, and, I, and I asked our, our, um, our listeners to tweet pictures of their pinky toenails mm-hmm. to us. Yes, I know. Did you get any of these? No, I did not. I got a few. Well, I appreciate I, you guys not I t- think it's tweeting them to me because I'm my case. legit so nauseous. Um, I don't know what needs to relax. Everything needs to relax. But all I want to talk about is pregnancy things. Go for it. Pick a thing. Progesterone. My progesterone levels need to relax. The past few days, I cannot breathe. And this podcast alone, you're probably going to experience me. By the way, if you're a new listener, how did you land on this random 24th episode of our show? Um, uh, and you don't know who we are. I am pregnant with twins right now. And I'm nearing the end of my first trimester and my Mm. progesterone levels, because they're twins are very high. And for some reason, high progesterone levels, extra hormones, all the extra blood. Progesterone. Progesterone. Uh huh. That's what I said. I will try. (laughs) I'm a horrible speller. Do you want me to try for real? Yeah. First, let me tell you what it is. Okay. Um, well, I don't know what it is, but it's, it makes you not breathe. (laughs) I don't know. My doctor was like, because of your high progesterone it's levels. A hor- it's a hormone released when you're pregnant. Um, yeah. So basically, I it was the first indicator we were having twins, the, my progesterone levels. Um, we're so high. We're so high. And randomly throughout the day, I'll just be sitting in the car watching TV, like anything. And I'll just be like, <gasps> like I've run a marathon. Yeah, and it happens all day, every day. sprinted up the stairs. It drives me crazy. I'm like, I just want to breathe. You're just sitting there, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, progesterone. It doesn't you really sound want me fun. To, I'm a really bad speller. Go for it. P. Oh, Chris, like, I feel like I should do it like spelling me. By Chris, the way, if you can put show. this at the bottom of the screen. The letters. Yeah. <laughs> progesterone. P. R. O. G. E S T E R O N E progesterone. Can you use it in a sentence? My progesterone levels are so high. They're making me be short of breath. That wasn't a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> My grammar needs to relax. Hold on. I want to look up and see if I was right. Progesterone. I think I was right, love. Wow. I think I sort of right because I've looked it up so many times. Mm-hmm. Progesterone levels with twins i'm just gonna search this really fast um can't breathe i just want to see because you know google is always the best source to d- use shortness of breath i think uh, our doctor specifically told you two days ago do not do this i know in the first few weeks of pregnancy a normal increase in the hormone progesterone causes you to breathe more often this can look and feel like shortness of breast breast Oh, sure. And I certainly don't have shortness of breath. That's for sure. <laughs> um, this can look and feel like shortness of breath. This hormone expands your lung capacity, allowing your blood to carry large quantities of oxygen to your baby. And for me, it's babies. And it's that means double my, my first squared times two. Yeah. My first appointment with our doctor, um, right when we found out we were having twins, that was one of the first things she told me. She's like, your progesterone levels are going to be so high. You're going to have a lot of shortness of breath. And man, is that true? Like randomly in the middle of the day, I like can't breathe for an hour. I'm like, it's like 
it feels like my lungs are collapsing. Yeah. It's awful. It's been really strange since you're it's been an, really bad like an athlete days. too. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shut up. Um, but yeah, it has been exceptionally. Sorry, I just tried to hold in a burp. <laughs> Guys, I don't know what to tell you. Don't hold in a burp. I'm very pregnant and it's, I know, I, it's just all, all I talk about. I hormones know, and sorry. gases. Lots of gases. Times two. Lots of just everything. I just feel, I feel like a mess because I am a mess. No. Um, but we're almost out of the first trimester, which is exciting. And it gets. Well, for better. most women, the second trimester gets better. But yeah. in my only experience with pregnancy, that did not happen. My only experience with pregnancy with, was Flynn and. Uh, my second trimester was my worst trimester. Oh, and one of the worst symptoms I had with Flynn was the knock on. Yeah, was um, wood. I fainted all the time, and I would faint and barf at the same time as you probably remember. And um, I almost fainted this morning, and I was like, "No, <laughs> it's starting." Um, but I didn't faint, and I have I'm in uh, really good hands. For those I'm of you, yeah, a faint barf is like probably the worst kind of barf. <laughs> <laughs> a faint barf, because I like. Can you mime a faint? Like, what is it? What does it look I like? I can't mime. I don't know because I'm never like conscious a, when it happens. Yeah. I don't remember any time barfing when I'm fainting. Mm -hmm. I just know that like I lose my, I feel lightheaded. I feel nauseous. And then I lose my hearing and my vision. And then I either black out for a second or I'm able to get on the floor fast enough with my feet up. But then I just like kind of lay there for 15 minutes, not being able to really like everything's kind of like wah, 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 wah in my head. And I can't really hey, say you always, anything. You always look at me first and you have a very it's a very specific look in your eyes. And I like, know exactly I'm about what to go means. down. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it hasn't happened yet this morning. It almost did. And luckily I was getting an IV like hydration treatment this morning and the nurse had just gotten there and I was starting to feel like I gave Eric this look like I'm about to faint, bro. Like this is bad. And then she um, gave me my IV and immediately started pumping yummy vitamins and hydration and medicine into my veins. And so then I was fine. But anyway, this is a fun podcast. <laughs> and we're going to tell you some fun stories. We actually do have a really insane, insane story to tell you about our day. Our day was wild today. Um, and so we're going to talk yeah, about might, that. This episode might just be a slice of life because today was one of those days where nothing on the calendar per se. Right. Nothing. Like a day off, big, relax as yeah, a family. Yeah, kind of just like a chill day. And we had a big week. So and a big week. So this was like our kind of wind down yeah. day, we thought. And, and then it just it started kinda, with a bang. It started with a bang and ended with an explosion. It's just, that's one way, yeah, certainly one way to describe it. <laughs> but before we do anything else, I want to say thank you and hello to our first sponsor of the day. I'm so excited. And when we get back from this first sponsor, guys, we got an exciting song to sing for you before we jump into the episode. So uh, get ready for that. But first, let's say thanks to our first sponsor. You know what I've been doing a lot lately, love? Shopping online for new clothes because I'm growing. She's already You're gained 20 boy. pounds, honey bun, and nothing and fits, great. so I'm always shopping online. And you know what is not fun? Shopping online for clothes, and that's why I'm so happy that we have Stitch Fix. What I'm if gonna... you had a personal stylist? I mean, we do have a personal stylist. Should we talk what? about this? Shopping for new clothes can be needlessly stressful, so why not let Stitch Fix make it easy by doing the work for you so you can spend time doing things you love instead? How about that, love? Yeah. You just got a Stitch Fix box in the mail the other day. I did. Was it all amazing? I kept all of it, but one. Okay. But that's okay because it's really easy to just, they give you a pre prepaid mm -hmm. envelope and you mm -hmm. just stick it in any mailbox, whatever. I know. It's amazing. Send it's so it back. easy. I know. It's all it is. It's awesome. In case you guys don't know what um, Stitch Fix is, Stitch Fix offers clothing hand selected by expert stylists for your unique size, style, and budget. It's a completely different and fun way to find clothes that you will love to wear. Every piece is chosen for your fit and your life, and it's the easy solution to finding what makes you look and feel your best. Try on pieces at home before you buy, keep what you love, and return what you don't. Just like Eric said, Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns, and exchanges. And like he said, a prepaid return envelope is included. Makes it so easy to return clothes. You can communicate with your virtual stylist. It's amazing. In, in the box can be a dress shirt and some active wear. Hello. For those active people it's, out there's there. There's so many perks. There's no I subscription required. Nope. You can try Stitch Fix once or set up automatic deliveries. You'll pay just a $20 styling fee for each box, which gets credited toward pieces you keep. And there are no hidden fees 
ever. Stitch Fix has styles and clothing to fit any occasion for women, men, and kids. They ship all over the US and they're available in the UK as well. So if you guys want to check it out, you should. I need to update my Stitch Fix box because I have grown. <laughs> so I need to know. update it a little bit. Um, but I'm excited to do so because I'm sick of trying to find maternity clothes online. So I'm hopeful that I can find some cute stuff in my, ne my next Stitch Fix box. If you guys want to check it out, get started today at stitchfix.com slash relax and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash relax for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash relax. All right, love. What okay. do you got? I, this is a surprise for me. I'm excited. Yeah, so it's, it's been a while. I, as people know, I've, I'd like to do these listener review songs. That is to where is if you leave a um, review, hopefully five star. Uh, for this podcast on Apple Podcasts. I like to look at them and then turn that into a song. This is not a profession. This is a hobby. This is just something that tickles me. I am not Bo Burnham. Oh. I am an amateur. Relax. I love uh, Bo Burnham. <laughs> yeah, me too. I love uh, you more though. Who just, I just think it's fun for me. And, yeah. uh, and then I just and for do them me. here. And um, yeah. And I so, so sometimes, um, I will just take a, a listener review from Apple Podcasts and, and write chords to it and turn it into a song. And sometimes so I, these are I will reviews? be and sometimes I will be inspired. Okay. Which is the case in this this time. Okay, now I'm nervous. Don't I'm be nervous. Um, but I just want to throw out there that this superhero over here is gonna do this song right now. And well, he doesn't finger. have a fingertip. <laughs> he like cut his finger bad yesterday, like should have gone to the ER for sure and didn't. And he's going to try to play with that. So that's impressive yeah, to me. Again, so I don't know how this is going to go because I am not Bo Burnham. And, and you uh, don't have a finger. And I don't have <laughs> a, a very important finger for the act of playing guitar. Um, but a lot of the reviews, uh, since we've announced that we have are expecting twins, um, have been name-based. Okay. They've been, uh, you should name your baby this. They've been mm -hmm. name suggestions. I, I was kind of inspired by someone named Dance Until You Drop. Love that name. On, uh, I, guess, I don't know if that's their Apple review name or maybe that's their screen name. I don't know. That's what it is on there. I had just listed a bunch of names, whether it be boy and girl, girl just and girl, not, boy and no boy. No context, it just said a just, bunch just of names. Just different scenarios, just kind of a paragraph of like oh, uh, wow. in whatever scenario of gender, et cetera. Like here's a bunch of names you choose. And I was like, oh yeah, names. We're going to have to... Pick names. two so names. We're gonna have to pick two names. Um, four names. Four and, names. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, oh, like six names. I mean, you got all these combinations. They got to sound good together. It's like, oh, it's the whole right. thing. So I was just thinking about that, and then I was uh, the other night when you had fallen asleep before me, which is not something that happens unless you're pregnant. <laughs> I know it's a while. Started messing around, and so this is just kind of okay. I'm excited. So these are uh, these are our twins' names. No, well, this is that's just kind of what inspired the idea. Okay. And so I don't I don't know what this is. This is just me being silly, and I have a I have not enough fingers to try and. You got it, love. Play this. I'm just not realizing your capo sparkles. I like that. Okay, should I just try it? Let's I don't. Just try I don't it, know. Yeah. By the way, if this will even. Shirts. You. You got two babies in you. I do. Yes, it's true. <laughs> you got two little babies in you. I've seen the ultrasound, and there's two babies getting down in your womb. It better make room for two babies in there, and they'll be here soon. Those two cute little babies in there And we don't know yet boy or girl Or he and her Or she and him Or they and them But we know Someday they'll need people names <laughs> Why is this making me cry? To be called If they run too far away Like Red Light Dublin Red Light Maggie Slow down for your mom and daddy what will their names be when these two babies fall and scrape the knees? It's all right, Alice, safe now, sailor. Mama's here to make your boo-boos disappear. 
You'll need two songs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'll crying. do this part over. <laughs> Jeez. You'll need two songs to sing. To get two babies to go the f to sleep. <laughs> hush now, forest, hush now, sky. Mama's here to sing you a lullaby. You, you got two babies in you. But what we gonna call them? It was hard enough to name one. You, you got two babies in you. Guess they could always change it, but I'm not sure of the legal process. <laughs> it's kind of hard. Or if it's complicated. <laughs> I think it is. Got two babies in you. That's crazy. Are you okay? No. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got two babies in you. Cry. Yeah, I looked up and then I was like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I like those name options too. Those are good name options. They're ones that we've talked about. Yeah, we've we have like we've tried to make lists of names this time around. We have long lists and um who knows what they're gonna end up being, but those are all good. That was so sweet. I thought it was gonna be like a silly jokey song of a bunch of weird names. Oh yeah, no. I, I didn't think it was like a real I think I song. I tried to do that at first, and then, I don't know. That was like it's just kind of like I said, you had fallen asleep before me. Oh, I loved I made it. That was two so glasses good. of wine. Like, so well, it was out. beautiful. It made me cry. I can't believe I have two babies in me. That's weird. You're right. No, it's crazy. <laughs> I see them in there. And they're just moving around. And they're in you, and there's you know. Ones. I gotta say, there's two. They call them baby A and baby B. Baby I call A's them top bunk, bottom bunk. By the way, yeah, baby A is the bottom bunk, closest to the, to the exit. Baby B's on the top. And baby He's in the B, exit row. Baby, he, we, we say he because we think they're both boys, but we don't know what their sexes are yet. Um, but the, the top baby, which I do believe they're both boys, for no scientific reason other than I just have a hunch. We honestly don't know, though. Um, the top baby is, like, totally nuts. <laughs> Like every ultrasound top baby's like kicking and rolling around. Because he's in first class and baby A's in exit row, just like mm, baby A's just like have to pull this thing. Chilling there, like just like kind of getting squished and kicked in the head by baby B. Yeah, our last um, ultrasound was By the way, crazy. Eric just said again, he, we don't know what they are, but oh yeah, if you're looking um, for clues in that, they're yeah, not there. there's no it's, clues. It's we just, don't know what they are, but we do know that like we both think they're boys. <laughs> just assume. I don't know. Um anyway, yeah. That was so sweet. You I, like it? I loved it. Thank you. That was so sweet. Um, let's talk about our crazy day, shall we? Let's do it. We've got more to talk about here. Okay, so we had a wild day today. And I didn't vlog today. I don't vlog on the weekend, so you guys won't see this. This is an exclusive, even though you guys see almost all of my life on the internet, this is a day that was wild. And you will not see this is the only place you will find this information on the internet. Wow. Um so today started off, first of all, as it always does since I got pregnant with some really intense nausea, some cute kid moments. And then Eric thought it's been really hot lately. It's been too hot to go outside. I'm going to take my cute little awesome son for a walk, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us about that, love. What happened? We went for an early stroll mm -hmm. uh, and we went to a, a park near us uh, that is a dog park. It's not, but like has become it's, one. <laughs> it's technically not a dog park. It's just a people park. It actually has signs all over it that say keep dog on leash. And no one which does. Are not only like flagrantly rejected, like to the to like there's like a neighborhood association where they just put up poo bags and just everyone mm -hmm. just gathers it's with pooper, lawn chairs. Scoopers everywhere. Let's their dogs run around like crazy. Um, but at the entrance by the street, there's kind of like a dirt dirt path where mm -hmm. a bunch of dogs are and and um me and Flynn are out and it's already getting really hot. Like it's been like a heat wave on the West coast. Maybe people know that. Um, and right in direct sunlight in, um, in the dirt, right in the middle of the path, in the middle of this path where these big dogs are running around right next to the street. Um, I'm walking with Flynn and I just see these, these two things about five feet away from each other, just kind of like writhing in the dirt. In, two things. What in, size are these in things? In agony. Like, well, 
I don't Give know, us a description. The size of a human thumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're probably <laughs> like In mouse inches? mouse size, like probably two inches, maybe three. Smaller than like a mouse, though. I yeah, would say. they're tiny, um, three inch, two or three inches. And normally, I'll you'll see like there's lots of like ground squirrels, like squirrels. There's mm-hmm. like lizards uh, that will dash, and you'll see something. But it was it was a very strange to my eye, and I was like, "What is that?" I couldn't even really tell what it was until mm-hmm. I got down, and it was like a newborn. And by newborn, I mean like. Literally, what newborn. seemed what could have been minutes or hours born baby bunny mm-hmm. bunnies. There was two of them mm-hmm. um, that had obviously been abandoned, like six feet apart in the middle of a dirt path, um, for whatever reason. And uh, like I said, at this point, it's already like ninety-five degrees. They're in the sun and the dirt, like, and I, from what I can perceive, is writhing in agony. That like my. My instinct was, and my conscious could not like made me be like, it's normally best to leave these animals mm-hmm. and, and whatever. But from what I know and now know more conclusively about bunnies, they don't come back during the day. Well, and to there was no offspring. There was no uh, nest or anything nearby. And I searched for any nest or any other kind of signs or anything. There was nothing, and I knew that like that these newborn animals were. Where I I felt and perceived like minutes from certain death, mm-hmm. and so I was like, I have to, I don't want to, I have to, to intercede here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Which you don't normally want to do, and plus I have my our two year old son with us, and I just I didn't know what to do other than to then to try and save them. Mm-hmm. So I picked up these two newborn baby bunnies and just put them in my shirt like this, and mm-hmm. kind of like. Taco to your shirt. Marsupial them, like pouched Mm -hmm. them. And then with Flynn holding my hand, walked all the way back home. He walked in the house and I and I'm like trying not to barf in the kitchen. And um, and Eric comes up to me and goes, look, love, you need to look at what I have. I said, what do I do? He said, what do I do? And I look in his shirt and I go, are those rats? Like they don't they don't even resemble bunnies. They were so newborn. newborn Yeah, they they were like like purple, almost translucent skin. Eyes not open at all. Mm -mm. Um, So, of course, I'm like, oh, my God, because we both know we've we've run into wild animals before and we know you're not supposed to touch them, leave them alone. Like you're not supposed. We both know this. And so I knew they must have been in a bad situation or for Eric to bring them home. I can honestly say that, like, I. I knew I knew for certain that they I mean, this is a dog park, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? There's giant dogs running all around me and like they're yeah, like, they're in 95 degree sun just writhing around. Like I knew yeah. certain death. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done anything. I just my, I just couldn't my, like so, I couldn't do it, which was yeah. also which was confirmed later by the wildlife rescue place. Right. That we, we did call contacted so, and they thanked me for right. picking them up. So like I raised bunnies growing up. I had tons of bunnies. Did you not know this about me? Why would you not say this at any point during today? (laughs) I raised bunnies and guinea pigs like in our backyard, like my whole childhood. Like we had like, I had like 25, 30 Why would you not mention this the whole day that we're taking (laughs) care of newborn? Well, because I've never had to take care of them from birth because the mom always did it. You know, I've watched them grow. Oh, like I've been with them every day. You made it seem like you you made it sound like you were like a breeder. No, no, no. No, I, I bred mice. Um, growing up and I had Excuse lots me. and I helped a lot of kitten births, but bunny and guinea pig births. You were, I, a, you were a cat doula. Oh, yes. <laughs> I still vividly remember the smell of like the sack that the kittens come out in and that the mom eats off. Like I remember the sound that it. What other podcast can you get? <laughs> Someone so talking anyway, about the smell of a kitten sack. Eric's like, what do I do? And I here so, you are listening. <laughs> I know. A okay. minimal amount about rabbits, um, but I started just doing as much research as I can. First, looking up wildlife rescue. But you near also us. seemed really calm and like, okay, yeah, we you got knew, this. Yeah, you like so. I knew maternal <laughs> instincts just kicked in in your training. Yeah. Well, my training. Um, well, I, I have called. I re- like a month ago. I had to call wildlife rescue because there was a very tiny baby possum in our backyard. So I had the number and I knew how to do it and everything. So. We had that ready, but first I just wanted to see what to put them in. You know, these are not the type of rabbits I have had in the past. These are wild cottontail rabbits. Like these are not the type I've ever experienced. So I was like, what do I put them in? What do we do with these? Should we avoid touching them at all costs? What, like what temperature, you know, I'm looking up all this information on them. I found out 
what they can eat in case we had to emergency feed them, which we didn't want to have to do because we want to make sure that we're just doing whatever we can is the best for these little babies to keep them alive. Yeah. I, I also, I just kind of want to interject here. Our, our neighborhood for some reason is lousy with them. Like they're everywhere. Like you yeah. see them all the time. They're everywhere. Including like, um, unfortunately deceased in the road yeah, or all in the our, time. Uh, twice in our driveway, mm-hmm. like just, yeah, just not because of us driving over. Them, right. Just no. Like off to this. It's just, they're, they're all, all over around in this, in this hill of Los Angeles. Um, so anyway, uh, we contact the wildlife rescue center and they're like, you did the right thing. Um, keep them warm. And, uh, we're, they actually will not survive on their own. They're just born because we sent them pictures and, um, and they said that we had to contact a specialist, like a rabbit specialist, wildlife specialist. And so we did and did not hear back. (laughs) So we kept trying to contact this person. She, she ghosted us. She totally ghosted us. And we're like, what do we do? So I just kept doing more and more research and I knew how to feed them. And I have fed baby kittens who've been abandoned by their moms before. So I knew how to do that and I knew what to feed them. So I know that bunnies are only baby bunnies are only fed twice, once in the morning and once at night. So I waited till evening. We were hoping to hear from this specialist who could come get these bunnies from us. (laughs) And we did not hear anything. So then I was like, I know they need to eat. So I bottle fed like dropper baby. I have a tiny little baby bottle nipple thing, um, for tiny animals and got the right type of, um, the only type of milk that you can really feed baby bunnies is like, um, uh, cat milk, baby milk powder and goat milk powder. So we got cat milk powder and like mix it with warm water. And I just like cradled them and fed them. And it was really cute. But I also am so scared that we like, I feel like we tried to do everything we could to do the right thing today. Like we call all the right places. We did all the research. It was like, nobody they said would we like did the right t- thing. Like I was take, like, nobody so would like, s- nobody would like take them. They weren't like, bring them here, like take them. They were just like, they were like, yeah, they're going to die. Like advi- call these there was people. advice like, um, there was conflicting advice. Like you can put it back out at night and hopefully the mother will, will come back. But, but the that, wildlife rescue but people said, like, don't do that. Like a 50, 50. And then they were like, other people were like, do not do that. Yeah. Um, and there, and, and and by the way, Eric went back to the park after he gave me the, the bunnies. And I, I was searched like sitting for there. an hour for a nest yes, or burrow. Everywhere. He took pictures of anything that could look like a nest or a burrow Again, or a Again, this hole. was a day off that became this exhaustive day where I like, I could have just not interested and just let it, they nature take died. its course but i know they would have but like someone's gonna say we did something wrong i'm here. sure and just know um, we we did that's try our okay. best that's okay because i know in my conscious like i i we really did everything if we you could. were there in that moment like you couldn't have you couldn't have just watched that happen um and, and so, then you and then it just then you're just kind of fumbling uh, after that trying to figure out how to do right and good by like nature and this this defenseless little thing well, you know, we know the the best thing for them is to be with an expert with wildlife yeah, bunnies. And so we're going to call again in the morning and try to figure out they ate well. They're both they both seem to be healthy and breathing. I've just been watching baby bunny videos all day. We're doing all this research, everything I can. So we really are trying our best. But it's like it's um. so that was the start of our day. <laughs> I love that we made it seem so dramatic, but it felt so dramatic because it was like we just wanted to like save them and like make sure they're okay. We've just been so concerned well, about these two little babies. People have had like, cause we are, we're humans we're on this earth, but there's also lots of animals. I want, I'm sure lots of people listening have like come across on a hike or some, some sort of circumstance where they, cause this isn't the first time this has happened to me yeah. where I've run into a, like a, what seems like defenseless baby animal. And like, you're like, do I do something? Is it, is, do I make it worse if I yeah. do something? Like I'm sure a lot of people listening have had, yeah. Similar like crisis of conscious to where it's like, well, I don't think I should help. But if I don't, this thing's going to mm-hmm. die. Right. So well, I have you made to. the right choice because the the people at the wildlife like rescue center yeah. said you did. They were like, yeah, they would have died because I was like, oh, they're cute. They were not. <laughs> they're you know not what I mean? <laughs> they I, look I like little weird. I thought ra- it would be rodents. fun because it's not been f- like this fun. It, you know what I mean? It's I just so sad. I felt obligated to. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, they're, they're warm, they're cozy, their tummies have the exact right amount of food that they should have in their bellies. So the milliliter. And, um, they ate well and now they're cozied up and cuddling back to sleep. And tomorrow morning we're going to try to figure out what to do with them. But that was like, 
the start of our day. And then this, that was the start of our day, but also me fainting, like, or not fainting, but like the first time of feeling like, Oh, I'm, am I faint? Like I, I got an IV drip, which was great. But then I all week have been like, <laughs> Hey love, I really want to just like have a day where I go to like Michael's, you know, just like, I just want to like, right. Go to Michael's craft store. We don't go anywhere still. We still t- take everything very seriously because I am pregnant and like, we're, and you know, we're just trying to take everything as seriously as we can. And, um, so we don't well, go. We're not acting out. We we're not like to. going on vacations and we're not like, we're not flaunting. Not there's the anything wrong with that. But like, or, but like we have a two year old who obviously you can't vaccinate a two year old yet. And we have yeah. a, a woman pregnant with two children. Mm-hmm. So we're not flaunting it. Yeah. So we basically, um, you know, I sometimes get stir crazy and I was like, I need to just like go to a Michael's and just roam around a Michael's. I'd love to go as a family. Flynn's never been to a Michael's before. Flynn doesn't go to any stores. And I thought it'd be fun. Well, Flynn, guys. Flynn go, as much as you love Michael's craft stores, mm-hmm. like taking your son there mm-hmm. for the first time, I feel like is a big moment for you. It was a big moment. And man, was it a big moment. And he was so overwhelmed. And so excited. overwhelmed and excited and and stressed because I think there's just so much to look at. He was like, "What is this place?" Right. So I I got to tell you, I smelled something early on, and I was like, "We were in the car," and I was like, "Why did you say anything?" I did remember in the car, and I was like, "Did you poop?" And I like looked in his pants, and he didn't. I was like, "I smell something yeah, we're gonna rancid." Talk about poop now again. Sorry, guys, we're gonna talk about poop. Ugh. And so we get in the store, and we're together, and Flynn's just kind of acting a little. A little overwhelmed. And I think it's just because it's a new I, yeah, store. Before, before we get into this actual experience, let's get into like the origin story here. Let's get into oh like the, the genetic, you know what I mean, uh, correlations here. What happens to you usually in a, uh, even like let's say pre-pandemic, mm-hmm. what happens to you in a Target or a Michaels? I have to poop immediately. What's, why? What is that? Is I don't it, know, but I recently found out it's kind of universal because I've seen TikToks about it. I, every time I go to a Michael's craft store, it's immediate. I have to poop like immediate, no matter if I could have just pooped eight times before I go, if I walk into a Michael's, I have to go poop. No, it's, it's happened to you. Like we've gone to like a pet smart and you're immediately or like, got to poop in like in a, in a public place, in a public gotta bathroom. Poop. So bad. Home, yeah, I don't nowhere. know what it is. I can't tell you, but it happens. So it Flynn just kicks in. I guess I, I can't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I am not my bowel movements. I can't explain to you this. I call it or the science behind it. Do you know what? That it happens to me when I'm looking for something. If what? I've, <laughs> like in the house? If I've like lost something, I'm like, maybe it's in the garage and I'm going through like boxes. If I'm like look, if I'm like snooping around, it that's it happens to me. Or if I'm like n- like really nervous. Hmm. Yeah, nervous. I mean, that's obvious. Do you get nervous in Michael's craft stores? No, not at all. I get excited. I guess the excitement, it's an excitement. like <laughs> makes my my intestines do their job. This was not. Anyway, you guys. We're like, we should do a podcast. We'll Did keep we- it short. We'll keep the story short because we spent too long on the bunny story. So we're just enjoying Michael's. And then I wanted to go like find a craft or something to do. So I was hanging out with Flynn for a while. And then I was like, I'm going to go look for a craft. And then Eric started looking for something with Flynn. They were just looking at trucks or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then Eric called me. I did. You did call me. Wait, but you got to. What? A lot of stuff happened on my side before I. I don't had know what to, happened on your side. I only know what happened on my side. Emergency call you. We should have had like a code word. If we had a code word that, for this situation, I would have just called you and or texted you the code word. I should have known it was bad because whenever he or I are calm about something, it's usually a very bad situation. And you answered, and I was. He 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 said this to me. He I answered, and he goes. Nothing's wrong, but you need to come here. <laughs> you, need to come to, you need to come to the front of the store immediately. But nothing is wrong. I wish and I had I was the like, intercom. Oh, I wish something it, is I, wrong. It was so big that if, if I'd had the, could have grabbed the intercom, you know what I mean? To do it over the loudspeakers of the Michaels. Like yeah, it was. But you know what? should have. It seems like we're going to go into a lot of detail about what happened. It was a, an epic parenting moment for us. It was Slash fail. It was it was a parenting moment that fail. gave us a little bit of a glimpse into what we're about to get back into. Because when babies are babies, there's a lot of poo involved and then they kind of start to grow out of that. We haven't had too much um you know, too many terrifying experiences with Flynn with feces. <laughs> You're like it's not we're not talking about poo if I say feces like 
Is that cleaner? Does that sound cleaner to you? I don't know. Listen, whatever. You know what? I this w- sounds this- dirtier. <laughs> Just say poo. Don't say feces. Okay, sorry. Okay, we're we, this is going to get very detailed. It it was pretty intense what happened next, and it was a very intense parenting moment that I'm sure a lot of you out there have experienced as parents. And so we wanted to share it with you. And then I wanted to share some of your fun parenting experiences that you guys tweeted at us. But first, I want to say thanks to our next sponsor, (laughs) which is No Days Wasted. You guys, this year, 4th of July is on Sunday. What? What? I love 4th of July so much. I think it's so fun. Uh, Which means you probably have work the next morning. Yikes. You don't want to feel like poop the next day, guys. Is that in there? It says crap, (laughs) but I'm saying poop. Um, You don't want to feel like poop, guys. All right. You want to feel good. Fourth of July is going to be fun this year. Last year, we were all quarantined. We just, we didn't even leave our house. We watched fireworks in our neighborhood from the front balcony. It was kind of depressing and weird. I remember like many fireworks. Like they made it illegal, but then everyone was like. like, Remember the air was smoky for like three days after in Los Angeles? Yeah, the thing on like the weather app was like the air is poison right now. Right. right. So I was like, great. So now we're in the middle of pandemic and the air is poison. I hope that doesn't happen again. Uh, it won't because, you know, the pandemic is coming to an end. Thankfully, people are getting vaccinated. I think people are going to go have some fun. It's going to be a fun year. Fortunately, it's going to be fun. But you guys, you want to feel good the next day. So if you want to get a little tipsy and you want to feel good the next day, you guys should try out No Days Wasted. Okay, so No Days Wasted is here with your DHM Detox. It's an herbal supplement packed with antioxidants and anti-inflammatory ingredients that is plant-based. Woohoo! We love plants. I love plants. You do plants love plants. Is kind of a thing. Uh, we all need a little support when we have a couple drinks so we can get back to feeling our best the next day. This summer, we're making up for lost time. Summer 2021 is a summer of balance and enjoying every moment. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Imagine this, patio drinks, you're having a great time, and the next morning you wake up feeling normal. What? what? DHM Detox uses researched science to help boost your body's natural response to alcohol and help break down those toxins. Forget the brain fog and that gross next day feeling. Just take two capsules after your first couple of drinks, and it goes to work. If you're not on the DHM Detox train, you're truly missing out. By the way, guys, Bachelorette just started, and I know... A lot of people like to have like their oh, they're nice dr- they're wine or champagne on that while show. watching Bachelorette. Check it out. Try DHM Detox so you can feel good the next day. They should. How much is your next day worth? For just a couple dollars, you can bounce back and support your liver all at once. It's a completely risk-free purchase. Completely risk-free, guys. So if you don't love it, they'll refund you on your first box. This is so easy. What an easy decision to make. Just do it, you know? Time is our greatest asset. So why waste days feeling awful after a few drinks? You deserve to have your cake and eat it too. We've got you 20% off your order and free shipping in the U.S. Just head over to nodayswasted.co slash relax and use promo code relax at checkout. That's nodayswasted.co slash R-E-L-A-X for 20% off your order. Nodayswasted.co co slash relax check it out okay so let's get into this uh story our our parenting experience today that was so fun so i get this call from eric that's and he's just like everything's fine but you need to come to the front of the store and i was like whoa everything's not fine what am i about to walk up to so what happened on your end love because actually we still haven't talked about this it was such chaos and like panic that not panic, calm panic. But anyway, what happened on your end? Well, we haven't even talked about this Michael's yet. Craft Store is your favorite place on earth, maybe besides yes. Disneyland, I'll say. Um, and we had sold him on the idea of going in there saying that they got trucks, mm-hmm. you know, because maybe there's like a, a vintage metal truck thing that you They have trucks there. They got truck toys and Or like stuff. A, truck, a truck craft, mm-hmm. which we did find. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so we're, I'm, you've gone off to look for whatever mm-hmm. you, you know, fills your heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, and me and him were kind of walking around just looking for anything with a truck on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're walking and I'm holding, he's holding my hand and he's so sweet. And I look down at him and he's just kind of doing something with, weird with his other hand. And then I noticed that it's like, it's like shiny. Oh God. And so I thought like he had opened some slime, uh, slime or something. Sand, you know, half the shelves there are like slime yeah. for some reason. Um, and I was like, what's on your hand, buddy? And it's, it's interesting because he's just getting to the age to where it's like, he's kind of like almost like a, like a full person. Like mm-hmm. you, you can ask him something and he'll have like a legitimate mm-hmm. response. Like in a version like his language, which we totally understand mm-hmm. at this point. Um, but he's just kind of going like this, his shiny hand. I go, oh, wow, 
what you get on yourself? Like thinking he just opened something and he goes, ah, poo poo. <laughs> <laughs> he did? Yeah. And I Aww. froze and I go, what is he talking about? And I look at it and it's kind of brownish, this mm -hmm. stickiness oh, on his no. hand. And then, then I notice like a little, uh, a chunk, a little chunk between his fingers. And I'm like, how, why, why would it, how could it possibly be on your free hand there? Mm -hmm. And I'd look at his back. And halfway up the back of his T-shirt is soaked. Crazy. And uh, it's gray. It's not like it was a white shirt. It was gray, but it's still somehow brown. Mm -hmm. um, and then spilled out over the back of his pants is just like a uh, um, an eruption, mm -hmm. an avalanche of uh, liquid. It is falling on the floor. Do you want me to say feces? This you can say whatever you want. Make you feel better. Uh, and on the... On his right shoe, on the toe of his right shoe, is just a clump. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, oh, oh we've, it's, we're like five alarm fire here with this. Like, we're in crisis comm mode. Okay. Mm. Okay. We're, we're in a I'm public gonna, space. It's his first time in a public space. Separated it's, from you. First so time in a public sad. space. And this is like, I feel like this, like, like you, he's inherited this from you. Pooping in Michael's. This, like, pooping <laughs> that's in the Michael's. one thing he gets from me. Yeah, that's what he got from you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I was like, okay, what do we do here? And I'm like, well, I got to get him out of here. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to the car where we have supplies. Well, first you, first you come supplies to me. Supplies for this scenario. First you, first you call me. So before that happens. Well, I need you to come take a picture. Yeah. So he calls me. He's like, you need to come. So I come up to the front of the store and he's like, look at his hand. And I was like, oh, that's poo. And then he turns around. There's poop. Ev like, I mean, everywhere, guys. So I come up to... <laughs> Eric and Flynn. Flynn's got poop all over his hand. He's got poop all over his back. Poor guy. This happens when you have kids. It just does. So don't come in to us with the mom shaming. Which, by the way, why isn't there dad shaming? Why is it always mom shaming? But anyway, um, don't come to us with that. Kids poop. And, you know, we're in a, a very slow, gentle process with Flynn of potty training. And it was a public place. He was nervous. And it just, it happens. Poop happens. And, and he was very sweet and just clearly maybe experiencing embarrassment for the first yeah, time, the but not thing, because of anything like we were the doing. the language we, like barrier that has been crossed all of a sudden where we can communicate on a, like an elevated level. He's also like, it's not like he's a baby doing this. Like he has a too. sense, he has yeah. a sense of embarrassment. But um, which, which we did not like, I mean, we were just like, oh, okay, let's go change it. You know, like we weren't like, oh, what, you know, it was very like. Of course like, not. No, 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 the opposite. Like it was, it was like, totally hey, buddy, it's all right. We just, we just got to yeah, go clean it off. It's like, you know, good. and so Eric ran to the car and we've had explosion, poop explosions and stuff with Flynn when he was little, because that happens a lot when they're babies. And it always happened right after Eric would clean out the car and we'd be like running a quick errand somewhere. Yeah, and it would I, be I like, we don't like, need a diaper bag. We're going to one place, you know? And that literally just happened today. Like, Yeah, I had very much cleaned the minivan. So there's nothing in there. There's a couple of diapers, but no wipes. I, I knew I had diapers in there. I thought there were wipes. But well, there were bring, not. I usually wipes. bring my purse, which has diapers and wipes and snacks. But I was like, we're just going to we, Michael's well, and coming right home. Right by the, the door to go into a garage is a diaper bag with a change of clothes. And my purse with all the same things too. And wipes. Um, and of course, the one, literally the one time we don't bring them is the time this happens. Because I had taken everything out of the car to like like vacuum it and stuff. So um, we have nothing. So Eric calls me from the car and is like, we don't have wipes. And I was like, all right. And I'm still in Michael's because I'm trying, I'm like, I have to go buy him a shirt. So I went and found like a little shirt that you can like tie dye or whatever for him. And then I was like, there's no wipes. There were no wipes, Michael. So I, there was a, a t-shirt on sale for $2. So I grabbed that and scissors. And I was like, I'm going to cut up this really soft shirt and use it. It's as like right, rags. I, as I said, it's right next to a frozen yogurt place. I'm like, in my mind, I would have just gone and gotten napkins. What would you rather have though in your all over when you have like that much poo like wiping you is like rough you could have just gone in and been like hey you guys any, have any those napkins are like napkins. rough sandpaper though well, well maybe they have like wet wipes like because like uh frozen yogurt is sticky i don't know love it was a panic but your and solution I see, was like i will buy it it was like rags it was like they were soft like i figure he's always been tra already been traumatized enough At the least we can do is give him like a been soft traumatized enough let's cut up a t-shirt in front of him no, he didn't see me do it. And and it was like, you know, a soft rag is nicer than like sandpaper napkins that disintegrate from some like yogurt shop. Like as if that would hold any poo, those napkins. Well, as, as you're doing, 
It's every second matters in this situation. <laughs> every second. And as this is happening, I've gotten to the car, realized that there are no wipes in the car. And I'm just calmly, t- and this, like, the sun is beating down. So I'm just calmly talking to him saying like, it's okay, buddy. We got this. We got this. And I pop, pop the trunk of the car. You know, it's a minivan. So there's like a space back there. And I just kind of prop him up in there on a reusable grocery bag. He's standing on that. So that now has poop on it. Mm-hmm. And poop is just, it's just kind of, just at this point, everywhere. it's everywhere. It's, it's because I've been wa- like, have it, like, you know, it's my two year old son. It's all, now all over me. Mm-hmm. It's everywhere. Uh, and I have him like in the middle of this parking lot with a big trunk open. And I, I'm like, right, we're going to start taking layers off. Mm-hmm. Shirt off, pants off, poop everywhere, poop all over me. Like it's very obvious in this busy parking lot to anyone parking and going into the Chili's right there <laughs> as they're walking in for their fine mili- uh, meal at Chili's, um, who we've promoted a lot on this podcast. I know. Uh, there are, they're double taking at me in this, um, this poor two year old covered, covered in head pole. to toe. And I only had two, two diapers there to try. I'm like trying to. Fix the situation with two dry diapers, no wipes. So I've wiped his hands with an old, not old, but like, you know, no, dry diaper. diaper. And then I put a second diaper over the poop filled diaper. Which we've done before in an airplane when he had a waist high children. to try and just contain the situation momentarily. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, um, we started trying to clean up with my rag solution. Then you it come wasn't out, working. Then you come out with a t-shirt that you're like cutting up with scissors that you just bought. I was just trying yeah, to do the no, right it's great. thing. And I'm like dumping his water on it to get it like wet to clean off his hands. And he's just kind of gone, Dada, just, there's poop on there. Like he's, yeah. he's like telling me like, what, <laughs> what's going on? What's the end game here? Like, yeah. So we get home, we, we wash him off soap and water and then we're, we're like we're just getting in the pool buddy <laughs> yeah straight to the pool so we we rinse off with soap first and like in, by the sink and then we all kind of like in, in my underwear like got in the pool with him and um in my underwear as well yeah and it was a nice family moment but it was a fun parenting moment of like all week I'd been wanting to go to Michael's and have like a moment where I like take my son to my favorite store and we get him a truck and I get a craft and I can have a nice relaxing evening doing a craft and like, let's spend time there. And then maybe we, we were, can go get yeah, dinner. We were going to go get frozen, frozen yogurt, yogurt and, after and then, and, and then dinner. you know, we haven't been able to leave the house all week. I've had so many doctor's appointments and IV treatments and I've been you know so what? sick. And I was like, we just deserve this night. And we get there and it was like, of co- and of course it was right after the car is cleaned out. And we always have like a thousand diapers and wipes and changes of clothes and snacks, all these things in the car. It is completely spotless because we just did like a minivan tour on my channel. It's not spotless. Mm-hmm. No. Well, now it's not spotless, but now there's poop all over the car. But like, it was just so classic, like parenting you know, in hindsight, moment. Like I'm and retelling the story. I'm really kind of. I like this memory and like, I'm, I'm happy well, for it. Yeah. Anytime you and I ever go through anything that's like classic parenting or struggle parenting. It always makes me just go, we're like such a great team. I feel like we respond the same way. And like in situations like, like neither one of us panic. We're just like, all right, like you do this, I do this. Like now you go here. And you like, we're very, I feel like we're, we did, we do a good job in these situations. Yeah. We're a good team. Um, we're, yeah, we're very good. I, yeah, <laughs> I definitely think we're a super good team, but it was just very funny. And it was like, in the moment, there's no laughing. There's no, it's just, we're very serious. Like in the car, we're like, all right, so when we get home, I'm going to get a trash bag. Well, and I had to I'm drive home holding the steering wheel like this because there was <laughs> the poop on, just on spread eagle. all 10 of my fingers. And so I was just like driving with my palms. Yeah. And Luckily, so it wasn't like too far. Yeah. But n- then like later, we were like, that was such a ridiculous situation. Like just poop I all over my I wouldn't holes. trade it for that frozen yogurt and no, it was, after, like, it was, like, and we had fun in the pool like in our underwear <laughs> and um it was yeah we ended up having like a great night and great time but it was just a very classic like we are parents this is a parenting thing that happens yeah, now imagine that like times three man i know i can't believe it like, what so would crazy. we do then i think then we would laugh and like i think it's a lot easier to handle those situations when you have one kid who's like also flynn is and I'm sure the twins will be too, but like Flynn is the best human I've ever known in my life. And so awesome. Like, I feel like he handled that situation the best any kid could. Like he was very calm and, mm-hmm. and still and sweet and helpful. He like understood. He understood that it was like a problem, but didn't. 
Yeah, he didn't freak out. He didn't freak out. He He'll just freak kind of, out here for no reason, for nothing. Yeah, he'll freak out. <laughs> but he, we all kind of handled the situation exactly the same. Yeah. We were all like a good team. We all had like a crisis mode. I know. But anyway, it was like a nice moment. So I asked, I actually went on Twitter and I was like, do you guys have any crazy parenting stories oh, or fun. funny stories? And um, I really liked when we did that camping episode and we just kind of read funny camping stories. So I thought we could read some of your stories, but also I wanted to like remember fun stories from our parenting experiences like that. And also maybe from our childhood. But I remember the diaper technique that you did today where you like put a diaper on top of the exploded diaper till we could get wipes. Yeah, we, right. did we did that, that on, on an a, airplane. Yeah, but when, when he was, was like tour. three months. Yeah, old. of course. Any pooping explosions we had with Flynn were not within the last year. Um, and uh, well, actually, that might not be true. <laughs> I feel like we might have had a bathtub incident or two. But anyway, um, yeah, we we're on an airplane and we are landing where you can't get up and changing a poopy diaper on an airplane is not possible. Doesn't exist. It's horrible. But Flynn had an explosion through his clothes. We were landing. What's that? What's happening? You were like, let's get through this poop story as quick as possible so we don't talk about it. And then you pissed your pants and now we're going straight into another. Well, no, poop because story? I said I wanted to tell I just reminded me of how like your diaper thing that you did, but it also reminded me of another oh, okay. like parenting moment that was just like, this is so parenting moment. Okay. And so we put a diaper on. We didn't take Flynn's clothes off. You put a diaper on oh, over, over his clothes. His clothes. <laughs> yeah. So we got off the plane and Flynn is wearing a onesie with a diaper over his onesie, hiding the poop that was that seeking through, onesie. through his onesie. Um, anyway, we do have a lot of fun stories from all of you guys um, that I want to share with you guys. I guess we're, we're going to end the poo talk now because it's, it's too much poo talk, apparently. Do we need to end the poo talk, love? Unless, I can end the poo talk. They have stories that are also might just be. There, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of poo the title stories. Of the episode. Just poo talk. Yeah. All right. Um. Well, before we get into your poo stories and your parenting stories of fun, uh, I want to say hello, thank you, and I love you to our very next sponsor of the day. Who's that? Apostrophe. Oh. It's been a while. I'm excited to talk about Apostrophe again. They're wonderful. Hi, you guys. Okay. So I have a big issue with like blackheads. Like I'm just going to be honest. I do like blackheads. Like my nose, I'm always like, I'm kind of insecure about it. It's like an issue with me. And I actually bought this one device once that like supposedly sucks blackheads out. Okay. Did you find it on TikTok? Found it on Amazon, first oh, of all. Yeah. Really good Excuse reviews. Me. I've seen beauty gurus talk about it. Like I've seen people use it and it works. Did not work on me to the point where it severely bruised my face. Like, like hickey to your nose? Oh my God. My nose and my forehead. And I barely put it on my face, like barely touched it. And it like bruised, hickeyed me so bad and did not get any blackheads out. And it was the most <laughs> traumatizing thing. I had to look up like how to cover a hickey tutorials on YouTube on to nose. try to cover it up off my nose and my forehead. It was awful. So I just have to say, I learned my lesson to never do that again, but I'm sure a lot of us out there have tried weird remedies that did not work, like putting toothpaste on acne or, you know, whatever. Well, with apostrophe, we don't have to try all these weird things that are going to bruise your face <laughs> and make you frustrated with no, your skin you problems a, ever a again. A dermatologist. Exactly. A doctor. Because apostrophe actually does work. It is prescription treatments. That is why we're so excited to be partnered with Apostrophe today. Apostrophe is a prescription skincare company that offers science-backed oral and topical medications that are clinically proven to help clear acne. Apostrophe connects you with a board-certified dermatologist who will create a personalized treatment plan that is perfectly tailored to your unique skin. You simply fill out Apostrophe's online quiz about your skin goals and your medical history, then snap a few selfies and your dermatologist will create your customized treatment plan. Apostrophe treats acne, and they can also help you with your other skincare goals like reducing redness, wrinkles, and even dark spots. Not only is the product great, but the service experience is great. It's so nice that you don't have to go into a dermatologist. You can just do it on your phone. Yeah, you just take a couple co yeah, uh, selfies. selfies there and send them to uh, someone who went to school for way more years than, uh, than we well, did. Well, yeah, it's nice to know you're talking to a real dermatologist, right. too. It's not just some rando. It's like a real dermatologist who's actually going to no, help you with your don't skin. Don't just take selfies of your skin and then and send, send them it to, to a, a stranger. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Do it um, to the dermatologist. But that's probably my favorite 
part of the whole experience is how easy that was because I hate going to the dermatologist. So yeah. this is, has been really, really nice. So for me, my skincare goals, like I said, I have black heads and that's something that I'm very insecure about, but also have like dark circles under my eyes. So these are things that I let my dermatologist know about and pointed out, you know, when I was getting my first shipment sent to me and I've noticed a difference and it's great. So if you guys want to check it out, you can, and you should, we have a special deal for our audience. You save $15 off your first visit with a board certified dermatologist at apostrophe.com slash relax. When you use our code relax, this code is only available to our listeners. You guys are in a secret little club to get started. Just go to apostrophe.com slash relax and click begin visit. Then use our code relax at sign up and you'll get $15 off your dermatology visit. That's a P O S T R O P H E.com slash relax and use that code relax to get your dermatology visit and save $15. And we thank apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast. You're so good at spelling love. I know. All right, let's get to some of your guys' fun stories that you told us. Um, All right, Carly, this is another poo story. I didn't mean to do this, but it is the first one that popped up for me. Carly. Carly Ray Jepsen? Classy underscore Carly said, the first time I took my son out after he was born, I went to a restaurant with my husband to eat. I took my son to change his diaper. I took off his diaper on the changing table. He shot poop out like a bullet. It was a quick brown streak that's flat on the wall like a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> see, like these are things that happen. No, at least she's in the bathroom on the see, table. She gets it because it never happens when you're at home. No. With all the supplies. <laughs> well, and it does. A, it, a does but... <laughs> it, it does. But like it always seems to happen to a more extreme yeah. version when you're in um, a public place without all the necessary tools yes and um so our heart goes out to carly that what sounds restaurant? hilarious was it a Chili's by i don't chance? know but i just love that her description is a quick brown streak that splat <laughs> on the wall like a cartoon well yeah she's a i wonder if she's so a, a creative writing major because the way she told that story it's I know, very it's pretty like, good i could see it um debbie said when i was pregnant with my daughter my son who was four at the time was watching me eat and asked me mommy when you eat that food, do you drop food on the baby's head? <laughs> mm. He thought since our baby was in my tummy that the food falls right on top of her head in there. And I thought that was so cute. And it just made me think about how like it's such a hard uh, concept for little kids to understand like pregnancy. Like Flynn every day is like, are the babies out yet? Like he asks every day. Every time we go to the doctor and he knows we go to the doctor, he's like, they came out, right? They came out. Like, yeah, he's like, I don't understand. That's, like, why else why would you go there? In there? Why would you go there if they're not going to Like eight take times a week. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he asks about it every single day. But I thought that was so cute. And it, you know what I thought you were going to say? I thought you were going to say, like, going back to our last podcast, like, the baby was like, Mama, when you eat that, do you hear in your head your voice going, I'm eating this food right now. <laughs> I thought I was going to go back to that. Like, By internal. the way, a lot of people responded yeah, that. Yeah, that freaked people out just like it freaked me You're out. You're crazy. I saw the exact opposite response. They're all like, oh, yeah, we all hear our own voices yes. in our head narrating yes. everything we do. Yes, that's all I saw. People are like, people don't hear voices. What do they hear? That's the thing. It's like everyone wants to know, like, what do you hear in your head then if you don't hear your voice? You don't hear yeah. anything? Yeah, I don't know if that's... We talked about this in the podcast a couple weeks ago or last week, how like I hear a voice in my head. Like if I'm reading, I hear my voice narrating the book mm-hmm. and Eric does not. He hears nothing. I don't like talking about it at all because it, it makes the whole him, thing makes but me people, uncomfortable. People say the same thing as me. They're like, what does he hear? Then he has nothing in his head. How my, do you my, read a book? My father even texted us both recommending like mindfulness readings about <laughs> this and like I Buddhist I know. things. Um, um, yeah. So anyway, moving on. Uh, Sarah, by the way, a lot of the responses were like, I'm not a parent, but when I was two, I ate a penny. Um, so a lot of these stories are not from parents. What happened to the penny? Cause I'm Mm, guessing it. I'm guessing poop. So we'll skip that one. Sarah said, according to my parents, when I was two years old, I crawled out of our hotel room onto the elevator where a maid found me and brought me to the front desk. What? Mm -hmm. That's terrifying. Are your parents okay? Yeah. Because I I would I can't even lose my mind. Again, I'm knocking on this. this I think it's fake wood. Um, the idea of ever not knowing where he is for a second. No. Even in this house. Yeah. I don't 
like, and I remember, I have a vivid memory of being um, lost from my father, like being lost. Really? Um, and it was at Shea Stadium. What's that? Which is not, it's the, uh, the Mets, the New York Mets, mm -hmm. uh, the baseball team's mm -hmm. stadium. It was their stadium. Now it's City Field, but they used to have a stadium called Shea Stadium, which is now a parking lot. Um, but it was my first professional baseball game that I've ever been to. And I went there with How old my, are you? my father. I must have been like six or seven, maybe five, like well, very young. But if you've ever been like before you get to your seats, like kind of like the backstage of a stadium mm -hmm. where all the concessions are and everything, it's like, uh, especially before a game, it's like hustle and like there's a lot of people around. And I somehow just looking around like at all like this stuff and people and everything, like being this big city, like all of a sudden I realized, oh, I don't know where my dad is oh God. or anybody. And I just remember looking around and just breaking down. Into, and I remember this vividly. And yeah. I even remember the faces of this, the bless them strangers that saw this little boy crying oh. in a Mets hat, like come up to him and be like, Hey, don't worry. We're going to find your parents. Oh. Like, you know what I mean? Like it was so, they were so cool and calm. How are your parents when they found you? Uh, good. Yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I, I can hear your dad being like, ah, ha, ha. Uh, but also like he was, he was probably like only, I guess not like not that far away. I think they were just like, yeah, they, oh, this is the aisle. We go down to find your seats. And you know what I mean? Um, and then his his best friend came back and, and then found me like it was like probably it seemed like a long time in my memory, but it's probably this very short circumstance mm -hmm. to where I was like had gotten lost. And then was ushered on to like where you then see the baseball. Field. I don't know. It's just it's this oh, vivid memory so in my mind. Scary. But like I, I because of that and because of how mm -hmm. much that stuck with me. I like. I hold his hand. Oh, yeah. I we hold every store everywhere we're in. Like we never let go of that um, kid. And but then I now think about having two more. We don't have enough. Hand like, how are we going to do this? It's so yeah, I don't know. And And I also like I think about like. I was thinking about this today because we live in California. Um, and again, I'm knocking on this wood so many times during this episode, but like when there's been like a few instances of like earthquakes that you can feel, mm -hmm. we've sprint, I've sprinted. Oh yeah. Lightning I've, I've like literally pushed you aside, pushed you down to the ground mm -hmm. and then sprinted up the stairs to him. Mm -hmm. How do I do that in three different, four different directions? Yeah. To you and now three children. I, you know, well, how do I'm you, out of the question now. I get pushed to the floor. Well, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, um, like, how do I, how do we, I know, it's like really getting, crazy. like losing, you know what I mean? How do you, uh, well, and, and this is overwhelming to us. I know there's a lot of parents out there with lots with of kids. Multiple kids. Yeah. And they're like, for, oh, Eric and I have always been like, easy, you know, but, we're, we're so excited to have three kids. Like it's so exciting. We're going but, from one to three. And we also always said, two's my limit. Like we've always said that we've always said like, two's my limit. I don't know how people can do more than two. That sounds impossible. And now we're doing three and we're so excited about yeah, it. Yeah. And, and number three, the second twin that comes out, if you're listening to this in, in, in <laughs> yeah, 20 saw, years, no, we, we, lo we love you. <laughs> well, no, we couldn't be more excited, but it just sounds, it sounds impossible. I don't know how people like, I mean, my brother has, he's almost has six kids now. It's why I was pregnant with her six. It sounds so impossible that like my immediate instinct was like, well, I need a minivan that I can open yeah. with my feet. Yeah. You it's, know, it's um, pretty wild. Um, we'll be okay. Right. We'll be great. Thanks. We're going to do great. We're just going to have to have leashes. <laughs> That's what, another thing I thought of, but like, I'm like, I'm like, is there a cool like belt loop leash that there's I can tie a, to Flynn so a, that I'm holding to? And then Flynn is just like, I don't know if they still exist. There's like a backpack, like that looks like, like a monkey, like on the backpack. Have, and it's like that. a tail. I'm talking about, is there a cool, like, like a bronze chain? and leather oh, thing love. that I could tie to him? The, what? Are something you cool. That, that I don't doesn't know. sound cool. It sounds kinky and no, weird. No, I didn't mean it like that. I meant like hipstery, like you know, like like uh, those cool keychains you say. Chain, like that's... no, like it, it attaches to like your belt loop, and it's like where you would hang your like cool car keys from. But instead, it attaches that's, to that's like not a cool. That's plan. not cool. Okay. And no, I don't want him connected to a leather chain to his father. That's very weird. No, that's not what I meant. Connected to your belt loop, like. <laughs> well, I'm just saying because I'm holding because in my mind I'm holding two other babies. Yeah, he just has several roles where he's like holding the stroller holding onto the do they make a thing where we're like like you know how like there's the thing where they're like kind of like they're kind of mm -hmm. strapped to your and then like mm -hmm. do they make one where like one's on, and then one's on your back well that's only two we're gonna have three and then you can hold flynn's hand because you've got boom there's gotta there's be gotta be things. like a one where they're like both on your chest and they're like i i don't they I've call those things it's like a like wrap the swaddle things the swaddle like the, the swaddle wrap thingies swaddle wrap thingy 
Yeah, we're good. Parents. See, we know we're good. We know we're good. <laughs> Everybody um, listening has the most confidence on, in us right now. All right. Sloppy Molly said when my what? I know that's her Twitter name. She said when my daughter was about five, I saw her crying. I asked her why she was crying. And she said, I'm not crying, mom. I just have sweaty eyeballs. And I'm thinking your five year old is stealing lyrics from, from Flight of the Concords, of the Concords yeah. which is a great song. Your daughter has great taste. Alyssa said <laughs> when my kids were younger three four six and seven just Alyssa, not sloppy Alyssa. just regular Alyssa. Okay. Alyssa bananas oh okay three four six and seven gosh that sounds hard um they thought a hilarious april fool's day thing would be to rip up a bajillion pieces of toilet paper and put it all over our three thousand square foot house literally all over mm. and honestly i think that is hilarious yeah Alyssa, i like this it's a waste of paper, but Those like kids got a sense of humor. I think I would laugh well extremely hard if our three kids one day we woke up and there was just like and they were like playing pranks on us together. Like that's, that's my dream. Really yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> they were doing like like bits. I, like they were like, like they became it. like an improv troupe together to like I like it mess with us. That's great. Lisa Marie said, when my sister had her firstborn, he was probably just under a year at the time. She was busy doing something. And when she turned around to check on him, he'd put something in his mouth. When she tried to take it out. Oh, my God. She tried to take it out. And when she did, it was a spider. Mm -hmm. This is like my, I could not do that. If I like saw that Flynn had something in his mouth, I take it out. and It's like a live spider. I would. I would lose my mind. I would not be OK with that. If if he took a live spider out of his mouth, yes, like this a is huge gonna happen. Don't ever say that. Flynn's really good about not putting stuff in his no, mouth. No, he just if he sees a spider, he just gets up real close to it and blows. He just goes. <laughs> 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 That's he what he thinks thug. you do to any bug. He you just get as close as you can and then blow at it. <laughs> well, Flynn, I we've really lucked out. Knock on wood with Flynn. He's not a put stuff in your mouth type of kid. I think he's done it once or twice, but not really. Yeah, and he like he Knocking even on asks wood again. He asks before anything, like you can hand him a cookie and hold it and he'll look at you and be like, I'm going to put it in my mouth. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, you put it in your mouth. He goes, I eat it. And I'm like, yeah, you can eat it. Like he always asks before he eats anything. It could be candy, cookies, literally anything. He will ask. Yeah. He asks permission. So he does not put like he's never tried to eat Play-Doh or crayons. I think maybe when he was really little, he like licked a crayon. He's once. always like, I eat that. Yeah, he always asks first. He like looks, and before he could talk, he would look at us first and kind of like put it near his mouth. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Before he could talk, yeah, he'd like so put it near his mouth and look at us like, is this all right, bro? Yeah. The only, I don't think I've told you this, um, but the only bug thing he does that's kind of silly to me mm -hmm. um, that uh, w when we go in the pool, for some reason, there's like this bee thing happening in our backyard right mm -hmm. now to where it's like there's a group of bees that are. Uh, aggressive in a way that they want to be right in your face all the time and mm -hmm. like kind of close to you. And when you're the father of a two year old and there is a bee right by his head, you don't want And you know what I mean? Him to be right by the bee. And he's been stung by a bee. So he's fearful of bees. Mm -hmm. But so they're so aggressive and to the point where it's like almost every five minutes, I'm like, oh, bee Flynn and like kind of grabbing him and then kind of splashing mm -hmm. at said bee to, to keep my child safe and from being sun like normally i would just like kind of ignore them and know like if i don't mess with them they won't mess with me and he laughs hysterically he as funny. i'm like kind of like here and then splashing at bees he hysterically belly oh, laughs no. he thinks it's the funniest thing really to see his he probably just likes seeing you panic freaking out and splash at bees in every direction <laughs> and dodge and like bob and weave oh my god kind of grab him. he laughs that at happened it. oh my god he which it's so Flynn? funny we were remember we were on our RV trip and we're at Holloma Beach or whatever that place was called. Yeah. And there was like a huge bee that wouldn't leave me alone. And I was like running around screaming on the beach trying to get yeah, away from the bee. And he was cackling. It's like that. It's like it's it's he like a it cackle. So he thinks funny. it's so funny. But I'm like terrified that a bee's about to sting him. <laughs> Oh, God. Face. Um, well, those are all the the uh, fun little stories I wanted to read to you guys from Twitter. So thanks for sending any of yeah, your fun parenting stories. Um, we have an awesome final sponsorship that um, we're excited to talk about today. We love them. You guys love them. It is, of course, Daily Harvest. All right, guys, as we all know, I am pregnant and we're getting into the hotter months mm. and pregnant people and warm weather don't mix very well. And I am kind of dreading the idea of like being in a hot kitchen cooking while pregnant 
The weather gets warmer. The last thing I want to do is get all sweaty in my kitchen, cooking over the flames. Lovey. No, thank you. Mm -mm. But also, I don't exactly want to order takeout for every single meal. I'm getting sick of it. When I have a craving, I know exactly what I want. It's usually something we need to just cook to perfection here at the house. That is why I'm obsessed with Daily Harvest. Daily Harvest delivers delicious harvest bowls, flatbread smoothies, and more, all built on organic fruits, vegetables right to your door. It takes literally minutes to prepare, and I love knowing that the food I'm eating is actually good for me, especially now that I'm growing these babies. I want to make sure I am putting in as much good stuff as I can to, you know, outweigh all the fast food that I've been eating <laughs> during my intense cravings. They, first trimester, they say that's okay. They, they've let me know it's okay. They they haven't judged me yet. So I'm well, grateful for Daily Harvest here. Th- Underneath, there's some judgment. I, I they know. They say it's okay. I know. Daily Harvest never uses preservatives, added sugar, or artificial anything. My personal summer favorite is Daily Harvest Scoops. Whew. They're plant-based ice cream. Hello. When I have an ice cream craving, it hits the spot. And I know it's better for me, which is amazing. Scoops is the perfect sweet treat. Plus, it's gluten and dairy-free. Some of my favorite daily harvest menu items. Oh my gosh, there's so many, it's hard to choose. But the smoothies are really good, like the mango papaya smoothie. I'm super into yummy. the flatbreads. The Give flatbreads are flat super breads. good. Or um, there's anything like, on a bread that's flat. I will eat. Yes. Um, or like the the bowls. They have like those harvest bowls. Those are good super too. yummy. Daily Harvest is all about leaving the earth in a better place than they found it, not just for us, but for all future generations to come. They focus on increasing biodiversity, investing in organic farming practices, reducing food waste, and even prioritizing recyclable and compostable packaging. Daily Harvest is delicious, and the food is all built on whole organic fruits, vegetables that conveniently stay fresh in your freezer. So it's ready when you are. It's really the whole package. So stay cool. Stay calm, stay collected during the summer heat. Go to dailyharvest.com and enter code RELAX to get $25 off your first box. That's code RELAX for $25 off your first box at dailyharvest.com. Dailyharvest.com. You know, I know this this podcast is just kind of us hanging out and chatting about our weird parenting day, but... Um, I've really enjoyed it. I always love just like, it's like our nice date night every that's, week to just sit we, and chill. That's why we wanted to do this. When we like, yeah, agreed to do this podcast. We were like, oh, well, we never get to really yeah. and it's, sit down and talk to each other in, yeah. like, in each other's faces for an hour. Uh huh. And it's, um, it's fun to unwind, especially on days like today where maybe it doesn't seem like that crazy of a day to you guys, but when you think you're just going to relax all day and like color and do watch cartoons, maybe go get dinner together as a family. And you end up like raising two fetus bunnies and cleaning poop off the floors of Michael's craft store and your car is covered in poop and you're covered in poop and you end up in the pool in your underwear. Like it was not the relaxing day that we thought we were going to have. I nurse here with IV drips and it was just like an intense day. Action packed. Action packed, super fun. But that's what's so fun and rewarding about parenting and I feel like the best stories are the stories about days like this. And you know what? I just remembered my father actually made a cartoon, like a full on, like was in the newspaper cartoon about, it was called Terrible Twos. Uh I don't know if many people know this out there. My dad is an incredible cartoonist. Well, I know that. Mm -hmm. My dad is like a brilliant illustrator. My dad is very creative, very funny. And um, he truly he actually made his own newspaper called the funny pages that we as a family, I remember as a little girl rolling up newspapers, my hands getting black, wrapping rubber bands. And we go in the minivan and we chuck the That's so funny great. pages out the window That's to the so neighborhood. And the idea was that the entire newspaper is just comics. So he get local comics to like give them give him their artwork and it'd just be an entire newspaper of funny pages. That's so cool. Isn't that great? Yeah. So anyway. The, the, the main, I feel like that's the origin of like the idea of what a podcast is. It's just, you're making your own little newspaper and just chucking it on people's <laughs> lawns. Here we yeah, are. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it was you know awesome. I mean by that? Like, yeah. It seems like that. Um, but he started it, how it all started was he would draw cartoons of my brother, Trent, um, uh, during his year of twos, the terrible twos is what this cartoon was called. So what would happen is my mom would call my dad while my dad was at work and she's at home with Christopher, Trent and me. So I'm like barely one. Um, Trent is two and Christopher's four. So my wow. mom's home with a four-year-old, a two-year-old and a one-year-old. Bless her, yeah. 
And, Hardest job in the world. Yeah. And um, she would call my dad and be like, you'll never believe what Trent did today. And she'd tell him the crazy thing that Trent did that day. And my dad would write it down on a calendar. And so as a gift to her, he would like draw cartoons and put the date. So it's like he essentially made a calendar of all the crazy things Trent had done in this hilarious cartoon of like, he put his peanut butter and jelly in the VCR, in the VHS, like where the VHS tapes go. He, smart. he put orange juice like in the washing machine after my mom had thrown it alone. Then he dumped in his orange juice and then closed the door. And really? So, yeah. So but mostly in the dryer, just, in the dryer. just food products into like machinery where well, it's and belong. poop. So he also put poop in the dryer and turned it on with clothes, like dog poop. How old? Um, two. It was mm -hmm. called the terrible twos. Ah, yes. He fed me a snail. Um, he used a, he found a saw, like a literal hand saw and collected all of the dog turds in the backyard and hand sawed <laughs> like all of, the, all of them in half. Fascinating experiment. I wonder what the hypothesis was for that one. Yeah. He, what was he trying to get? At? I don't know. He broke the television knob so that it was permanently on Sesame street. Like you couldn't turn the TV off. You couldn't turn it on. You couldn't change the channel. It was just Sesame Again, street. The ingenuity there. Like I, there's like an idea behind it. There's it's just, smart. I mean, so many things like it's just, the list goes on and on. So my dad has all these cartoons of like, just I've the seen some thing of them, yeah. that Trent did that day and gave it to my mom as a gift. And then eventually turned it into a cartoon. He submitted to newspapers and then made his own newspaper called the funny pages that we as a family chucked out our windows. That's that was so completely, great. you know, no profit because like no one was paying for it. And it was just like something my dad did. I think Trent loves this too. I think he's like proud of it. Yeah, yeah, Trent sh shows him off all the time. But mm. that's just a good example of like parenting. It's just, this is just part of it. I feel like just these weird stories of poo and disasters and, you know. Flynn's now properly two and a half mm -hmm. on the upper side of two and a half, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you call that this year? I mean, he's everyone says terrible twos. I've also heard a lot of moms go. It's actually terrible threes is actually yeah. terrible threes. There's moments where you're like, I'm not dealing with an emotionally stable. <laughs> um, you know what, though? Like, but it's not that bad. It's not bad. If anything, it's great. He's really good. And then even the bad moments we talk about at night and we're like, that was just the best. He's well, the also, best. I would say this. Like, I think about this a lot. Like, I know. I think adults might classify it as like, this is not an emotionally stable person, but I actually feel like he's more emotionally stable than, than yeah. any adult. He's kind of just saying what we're all really Yeah, feeling. he's, he, when he, he has a feeling, it. he expresses it, which I think is so healthy. <laughs> I'm like, I wish yeah, I could you know, do you're that. Right. I totally take back what I said. And, and you're right. He's more emotionally stable than me for sure. It's just, we as adults have been conditioned to go like, well, you hide these things in your, we don't tell him this. We don't tell Flynn this, but like, I'm like, oh, come on. Whenever you know, he you're, act, in your mind, acts you're like, out, quote unquote, in a, situation i'm like calm down this is you you're expressing how i really feel but we're not supposed to do that <laughs> he didn't say that to him by the way we're yeah. always like how do yeah, you feel I'm tell just, me about it and give yeah. him hugs and i'm saying what i think yeah yeah, yeah. of course and, and um like but he doesn't have i mean he certainly says no when he doesn't and lately the last few days his new thing is i don't want to do that like he tells He's us discovered not free in a bratty will. way but he just like is let like we are very much like we want Flynn to tell us how he's feeling, what he's thinking at all times. He's very talkative, very conversational. In fact, never is he not having a conversation with you. If you try to have a conversation with anyone else, he's like, what's going conversation on? Conversation you also We're... have to be watching. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Um, watch this. Dada, 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 mama, watch mama, dada, watch this, mama. Watch this, watch this. Like to the point where sometimes he doesn't have something to say and he'll be like, mama. And I'll look at him in the eye and go, what? And he'll look at me and I can tell see You're him. Like, look for a prop. He's thinking like um, there was butterfly outside yeah. and I know he just saw it behind my head, you yeah. know, like, um, but he is so well spoken with his feelings. It's pretty magical. But lately his new thing is it's not in a bratty, like, I don't want to do that. He like, he just tells it's us, he's like, he's all. like, Oh, I don't want to do that. Like, we'll be yeah, time to eat dinner. Skipped, he's like, I don't want to eat he's dinner. He's kind of skipped the no, no. Like he's gone straight to, mm, I don't want to. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, like, and what do you say to like a two year old where you're like, all right, let's do this. Like, mm, I don't want to do that. And you that. know what? Fair. You, because and fair I, enough. I do that. Because yeah. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do, do it. anything. So it's like, you can't yeah, be mad because I'm like, you got to eat, bro. Because like, you got to eat your food. But like, He's like I, I get it. Because like, if I don't, don't want to eat, I don't eat. All right. Time for bath. I don't want to. Well. You're like, well, <laughs> so it's just a matter of like, explain. Like today, he said, I don't want to wear my shoes when we go to the store. And I was like, but I don't want to wear shoes. Yeah, but so it, we're like, yeah, why are shoes a thing? <laughs> and I was like, well, you, and then you, it's like, it just takes an extra step with us. Cause you have to like explain instead of being like, well, you're going to, cause I told you to. Right. We're like, 
Well, if you don't we have wear to shoes, rationalize it to him, but at the same time, we're rationalizing it to ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we're like, yeah, why are shoes the thing? Yeah, why? I'm like, well, if you go in the store, your shoes, your feet can get dirty. You can step on something sharp. You can step on a bee and be super ouchy. So shoes protect us. So we need to wear shoes. So would yeah. you like to wear your shoes? And I'm like, oh yeah, I'll wear my shoes. There's a threat. Bees everywhere. <laughs> Everything is just bee based. Well, that's where how he got his bee sting when he got his bee sting. He stepped on a bee. So um, we're just, you know, it's sometimes hard to rationalize though. Like when he's like, I don't want to do that. I'm like, how do I explain to him uh, that like, we're going to do this right now. Um, so yeah, but he doesn't have, he hasn't had a terrible tooth. He does funny stuff. He does like the funniest stuff I've ever seen in my life as a two year old. Like no one makes me laugh harder than our son. No one like Eric and I laugh hysterically at him every day. Yeah. I like every day, multiple times, like, like belly, belly, belly laugh. laugh, which it doesn't happen. He's me. what did he say to you the other day? It made me laugh. So uh, oh, we were talking about, Oh, there's a, a keyboard that he loves right now. Like a little synth keyboard that Eric has that Flynn loves. And he loves to put on the like temp songs, like twinkle, twinkle, little star. And as loud as and it whatever. can get. And, at, and there's and a the tempo setting tempo. and he turns up the tempo as and it can go pretty fast. And he goes very fast. Yeah. And he he's like, I'm a faster. Dance fast. Come on, dad. And like he like wants to dance to the like he loves it like loud and fast, like rock music. To him is this like killer music. Is and it's twinkle, nut, twinkle, little star. Thing? Yeah. So the other morning, Eric told me, yeah. yeah, tell it. <laughs> so it's like has only like 10 songs that it came with, and it's like twinkle, twinkle, jingle bells, and nutcracker is one of them. And he's very curious right now. He wants to know the name of everything. Like he wants to know the name of it. And he wants to relate to everything. And he wants to relate to everything. So he puts on, it's like a, a very basic, you know, keyboard version of the Nutcracker and he blasts the volume and he turns the tempo to the highest it will possibly go. And he's like, Dada, what's this? What's this song called? And I'm like, it's the Nutcracker. And he's bobbing his head and then he goes, I like crackers in my mouth. Like, he's just like, <laughs> I like, he's just like, he's like, he I need to relate to this. And he's like, ah, oh, got it. Nutcracker. He's like, well, I like yeah, crackers. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I like crackers like, in I've my eaten mouth. Peanut butter crackers he's like, before. I like crackers in my mouth. But like, that is so fun. It's like everything he has to relate to. He has to like, he wants to connect. He wants you involved in everything he's doing. He wants everyone involved in everything he's doing. And he wants to relate. Like it's, he's like, even today I was telling him that I was about to feed the baby bunnies. Like, and he said, what are you going to feed them? And I said, milk. And he goes, oh. <gasps> I eat milk just like me in my cereal. Like he was like yeah. so excited. He related to the baby bunnies. He just, he's the best. I mean, we could just talk. Every podcast could just be us talking about how cool Flynn is. That's what we're doing every night. I know. <laughs> I know. But uh, we're going to go now because let's wake I him up. Am, uh, we're going <laughs> to go because I am asleep. We love you guys. Thank you so much for watching slash listening to this podcast. And thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to TJ. Thank you to Chris. Thank you to all of you listening. And uh, here is a beautiful song of the day. I'm calling him song of the day. Huh? I don't know. When people do covers, it's the song of the day. That's the song of the day. The, I like it. The listeners songs of the day. It's been a while since we did track of the day. Anyway, here it is. Here's the song of the day. And Eric, so I heard you guys wanted to hear some rewrites of your podcast song. So here's my take on it. So you can relax. The world is scary and we're locked in our home But now we have big microphones So you can relax, that's the name of our podcast